Hello and welcome back to another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. In this video I'll be returning to the Sylvaneth to show you how to paint the Spite Revenants and as always I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. So here we have the Spite Revenant that I'll be painting as part of this tutorial and as you can see I've split it into three main parts. We've got the legs and also the back here, the torso and the right arm and then the left arm is a separate piece as well. Now there's two main reasons I've done this. Firstly it makes it a lot easier to paint all of these areas that have got uh, in crevices and hard to reach places if they're all split out into three separate pieces. Additionally, it also makes it a lot easier to paint because as you can see here and here I've painted these sections uh, with a black primer because the miniature I'll be painting is predominantly black, it just saves time later on. However, the middle section has been primed white and you'll see why in a few moments. So the first task in painting this miniature is to wash over the torso to create this nice ghostly blue colour. For this we'll be using a mixture of Baharoth blue and also Lamia medium. So I've created a mixture of roughly three parts Lamia medium to one parts Baroth blue. And this creates a very, very thin down glaze, as you can see here when I apply it over the body. What it'll do is it'll pull into the recesses mostly because it's quite watery. But one thing you can see also, it's giving the skin a slightly blue tinge as well. So I'm gonna be making sure I get an even coverage across the entirety of the skin here. So as you can see here, we've now got a nice blue tone to the skin. And what we want to do next is just to emphasize some of the details by applying a targeted wash of Gilliman Blue. Using Gilliman Blue straight out of the pot is a little bit too strong for our needs. So what I've done is I've mixed in roughly one pot water to one pot Gilliman Blue. I'm just going to be focusing this wash into the recesses. As you can see there, it just makes this slightly darker bluish color. I'm just picking out all of these areas. Being careful not to apply too much as we don't want to overpower the colour. So as you can see we've achieved a really nice blue tone on the torso, the arm and the head here. And we've got even the darker recesses bringing out the details. And the next step is to further enhance these details by picking some of them out using white scar mixed in with Lamia medium. This time I've mixed in one part Lamia medium to one part white scar. And this is because we don't want it to be too stark, the difference between the blue and the white. So this creates just a nice blending between the two. I'm just going to be picking out some of the details. This is especially going to be true around the face here. Just picking out the across the brow, along the chin, like so. And then we'll actually come to painting the rest of the body. So we're going to be picking out the tops of the chest here. You can see it's creating a very nice blend between the two colors. It might be a little bit tricky to see on the camera, but it does create a nice, less of a stark contrast between the two colors. For the next step, I'll be picking out the eyes very carefully using a bad and black. Now, I would only recommend painting the eyes in this miniature if you have access to a thin brush and also have a steady hand as well, as the areas are quite small. So what I've done, I've got a very small amount of a bad and black on my brush there. It's going to be carefully picking out the eye like so. The next step is to paint the teardrop in the stomach there, and also uh, there might be some scattered throughout the miniature, such as on the shoulder there. And I'll be painting these areas, first of all, with Xerius Purple. Now you should find the purple will cover over the small teardrop really nicely because it's white. However, just be extremely careful at this stage as you don't want to overspill onto the blue areas that we've already painted. With the base coat completed, the next step is to highlight these purple areas using Gene Stealer Purple. Again, we just want a small amount on the brush here. I'm just going to be very carefully picking out the raised section, just the raised, there's like a ridge going down the middle there. Be very, very careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted and this will just really emphasize the detail. So the next step is to paint the wooden areas of the miniature. And first of all, we want to achieve a gradient going down roughly from the uh, the top of the miniature here, to roughly down to about halfway around about here. We want to blend from the brown into the black. And for this, we'll be using dryad bark mixed with some Lamium medium. So applying the dryad bark is pretty much a two-stage approach. Towards the top of the miniature and these branches, we can apply it um, straight out of the pot, but we want to create a mixture of one pot Lamia medium and one pot dryad bark and start working this down roughly about halfway just around the, the shoulder here. So as you can see here, I'm just blending it into the black. Mixing in the Lamia medium will create a not quite a strong pigment. So as it blends in, it'll just blend in quite nicely. You can see there going from the brown to the black. And we're applying this roughly about the same level across the miniature, so as we come around the back here, it'll be blending down as well. So as you can see, we start off with dryad bark at the top there, and it kind of uh, blends down as we get further down the miniature. Now to further improve this, and also to build up some more definition in the branches, we're going to be applying a watered down wash of non-oil. 
Now the reason why we've watered this down is we want to just, we don't want to darken the dried bark too much. We just want to let it pool in the recesses and just uh, improve the blending, especially around the bottom areas here. And then just improve the definition on the rest of the branches. So I'm going to be focusing my attention towards the bottom of the branches, leaving the, the tops relatively free of non-oil. For the next step, we want to again start applying a gradient. So first of all, we'll be applying some Gawthor Brown mixed with some Lamia Medium to the tips of these branches here and blending them down into the darker dryad bark. But we'll also be picking out the details on these other uh, branches further on the bottom there and be uh, just highlighting the edges with Gawthor Brown. With a mixture of one pot Gawthor Brown to one pot Lamia Medium, we want to apply this to the tips of the branches like so. And whilst this looks like it's been applied quite thickly, it's actually quite thin. So what I'll be doing is I'll be applying it thicker towards the top but then start blending it down just to cover the edges like I'm doing here I'm just picking out all the edges of the bark I'm just going to remove a little bit from my brush just use that to highlight these areas now the final step in painting the brown areas of bark is to perform a final highlight this time using Bane Blade Brown this time I'll be focusing my attention to the edges of the top of the branches here creating a really nice pale coloured bark tip as you can just see I'm doing here by running the brush along the raised edge of the branch there and just picks a very fine line out like so. With the brown areas completed the next step is to move on to painting the black. Now the first step in painting this is to highlight all of the edges that we've got here on the black sections. First of all with Skaven Blight Dinge. Now the reason I'm using Skaven Blight Dinge for this step is because it's a very warm dark grey which means it's got a slight brown tinge to it which means it works perfectly for uh, these wooden bark areas. It just looks like a very dark wood as opposed to something um, unnaturally black. As you can see here, I've just been dragging the brush along these edges, just picking them out very carefully. And you want to do this across all of the edges on these black areas, and there are quite a few of them. With the first set of highlighting completed on the black areas, the next step is to perform a second highlight, this time using Storm Vermin Fur. For this step again we'll be highlighting the black areas and this time we'll be focusing on a couple of different areas than before. First of all we'll be focusing mainly on these raised sections of the branches you can see there, uh, poking out from the rest of the black areas. Next we'll also be picking out some of the, the higher areas. So for example this ridge here is a lot more pronounced than the others. Same goes for this one at the top, just on the top corner there as well. And then everywhere else it's pretty much just going to be a case of just picking out very tips, so just at the bottom of the leg there, just like again as well. With the black areas of bark completed, the next step is to start painting the leaves and also the claws as well, as you can just about um, see here. So we're going to be uh, base coating these first of all uh, using a Death World Forest. In much the same way as we created the gradient between the brown and the black areas, we're doing the same with the green. And so I've mixed in roughly one part Death World Forest to Lamia Medium, and I'm going to be applying the gradient roughly just along the forearm here, so just before it gets to the elbow. And the rest of the claw I'll be painting entirely with the Death World Forest. With the base colour applied, the next step is to wash over the green areas. This includes the claw and also any of the leaves with Athonian Chemo Shade. Now the intention of this wash is to provide some uh, depth into the recess and this really brings out the detail in the hand. And you can see here I'm making sure that I get this wash worked into all of the recesses and as well on the leaves as well. With the wash dried, the next step is to highlight the green areas with Elysian Green. As with the highlights we've performed in the previous steps, the intention here is just to drag the brush along the edges of the green areas, and this just creates a very fine line, as you can see there, just very gently dragging the brush along. I want to do this and pick out all of these raised edges and really bring out that detail. With the first highlight completed, the next step is to perform a second highlight, picking out the higher raised areas, which is along the knuckles there, and this time we'll be using Nurgling Green. For this highlight, we want to focus our attention along areas that are a lot more pronounced, so for example these knuckles here, I'm just going to be performing a very small highlight just along the top of the knuckle there. And then we're going to be applying this on other areas where it's a bit more pronounced, so for example just at the end on these strands there, and then also towards the end of the fingers as well. With the lighter green areas completed, the next step is to start picking out the carvings in the wood. So this includes, um, this, for example, on this miniature, it's on the knee there, just on the chest as well. And first of all, we're base coating with Warpstone Glow. Using a thin brush, what we want to do is to want to pick out the glowing areas just on the inside there. It doesn't matter if you overspill because it just does look like light is overspilling 
out of them. But one tip that I would recommend doing is just mixing in some water with your warp stone glow because then if it does overspill, it comes a lot, it's a lot thinner, so it doesn't, it's not as obvious that it's overspilled. So if you just apply a small amount of water and then just be very careful in picking out these areas. With the first layer completed, the next step is to perform a second layer on the inside of these carvings, this time using Moot Green. Once again, with a slightly watered down mix of Moot Green and also a very thin brush, we just want to pick out just some of the areas. Where instead of painting the entirety, we're just going to be picking out certain areas, and this creates like a, um, an uneven pulsating glow. So it doesn't really matter where you place it, just as long as you leave some of the darker warpstone glow visible in the recesses. Now across the miniature you may find some additional details such as these mushrooms that are growing on the leg there and also the leather straps are holding some of these talismans as well. So for this we'll be base coating those areas with XV88. So very carefully we just want to pick out these mushrooms that are growing on the side of the leg there. Just be very careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted. And I've mixed in just a small amount of water here because XV88 is a base paint which means it will cover really nicely even if it's slightly watered down. With the base coat of XV88 completed, the next step is to wash over the areas, this time with Agrax Earthshade. The main focus for this wash is to just get it into the recess, as you can see there at the top, and just pull against the actual bark, and then if you look underneath here, by applying the wash it brings out all that definition of the ridges underneath. The same goes for the actual leather strap that we've got here as well. By applying the wash over the top, it just really brings emphasis to the folds and knots in the leather. With the wash dried, the next step is to perform a highlight both on the mushrooms and also the leather strap there. And for this, we'll be using Tell Light Ochre. As this is a highlight step, we just want to very carefully drag the brush along the edges of the mushrooms there and just bring out some detail. The same goes for when we actually come to paint the leather. We just want to make sure we only paint the raised sections, leaving the darker brown visible in the recesses. Now one of the final steps of painting this miniature is to paint the small metal talismans that dot the miniature you can see you attached by the leather strap. Now the base coat for this will be Iron Breaker. When applying this step be aware that Iron Breaker isn't a base paint which means it's probably best to apply two slightly watered down layers allowing the first layer to dry thoroughly before applying the second one than it is to apply one thick layer. As you can see here it's covering really nicely but I'm just being very careful not to overspill onto the rest of the miniature. With the Iron Breaker dry, the next step is to wash over it with Agrax Earthshade. By applying this wash, we actually get two effects. The first of all being that we get a nice tarnished metal color, but it also brings out the detail in the emblem itself. And you see, I'm making sure I get this thoroughly into all of the recesses. Now, one of the final steps in painting the talisman is to just highlight the edges there with Stormhost Silver. By applying the Stormhost Silver, highlight we can really bring out the details on these edges here may really make this talisman stand out so as you can see I'm just very carefully picking out the small arms that are emanating from the edge of the talisman and a small amount in the middle there so we can see, still see just about the Agrax shade just in the recesses around it and here we have the completed Spite Revenant who you can see I've now based so whilst this tutorial focused on the Spite Revenants, you could apply the same techniques that I've employed in this video to the Dryads, the Tree Revenants, and also the Hammerdreth. If you enjoyed this tutorial, do let me know in the comments below, and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. You can also find out which projects I'm currently working on by checking out both my Facebook and Instagram, which you can find links to in the description below. Finally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading on over to my Patreon page. There you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will just really help me in producing more tutorials in the future. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.